Hello my friends! In today's video top 20 PowerPoint tips and tricks that will take your presentations to the next level. Let's go! Ok, so let's start with tip number 1, the glass morphic effect. Let me show you how you can quickly create a glass morphic effect for any shape on your slide. And here as you can see we have a couple of rusty looking blurred triangles and this is the look that we're going for. And here is one more example of how you could use the glass morphic effect in your slide design. Alright, so here we have a nice background photo and this rounded rectangle with some text inside and now let me show you how we can add the glass morphic effect to that rounded rectangle. And now let me move this photo to the side for a little bit so that you can see how the slide background looks like and as you can see it's absolutely white. That's super awesome! And here in the middle of the slide we have this rounded rectangle with no fill, thin line and some text inside. So let's just put this guy in the middle of the slide. Alright, and next let's make sure that the photo is selected. Let's jump to format picture. Let's go to artistic effects and let's choose the blur effect. Alright. And now for the blur radius, let's insert 100, which is the maximum value, and as you can see our photo becomes absolutely blurred. And this is what we want. And now let's just right click on the photo and let's copy it, ok? And now let's just reset the photo to the previous state, alright? And now let's do some changes to our slide background. As you remember our slide background is filled with a solid white color. And let's change it to picture. And here we get this button clipboard and as you remember we have copied the blurred photo. So now once we click on this clipboard button we can basically paste that blurred photo to the slide background. And this is what we want. And now let's just place this photo back to the center of the slide. That's good. And now we are pretty much ready to apply the glass morphic effect to any shape that we want. So let's make sure that the rounded rectangle is selected and let's choose the slide background fill. And now as you can see this rounded rectangle is taking that blurred photo as its fill. That's super awesome! And if you'd like to make your glass morphic effect even more realistic, you could insert a white inside shadow to your shapes. And this way you could create that frosty look. Well done my friends! Now you know how you can quickly apply a glass morphic effect to any shape on your slide. Ok, and next we jump to tip number 2 which is all about placing your photos and videos into any shape that you can imagine. It might seem easy to place a picture into a circle or a square, but what about more complex shapes? Well, let me show you how. So first of all let's make sure that we have some kind of custom shape that we could use to place our picture inside and you can use PowerPoint to create any vector shape that you can imagine. For example this blob looking shape was created using this curve tool and to create a blob shape all you have to do is just click a couple of times with the curve tool and make sure that you connect the ending point with the starting point and you'll get your beautiful blob. Ok. So this is how it works and let's actually jump to this slide and let me show you how we can create these beautiful circles and semicircles. So let me just select all of these shapes and let's delete them so that we can start from scratch. And let's just activate the slide guides so that we can see where is the center and middle of the slide. And now let's go to insert shapes, let's find that circle tool, hold down the shift key and let's draw a beautiful circle. That's awesome. And now let me show you how we can create a semicircle and first of all let's duplicate our first circle and now let's move the second circle to the middle and center of the slide. And now let's insert a rectangle, let's make sure that it covers the right side of the circle, then select the circle, hold down the shift key, select the rectangle and let's go to shape format, merge shapes and choose subtract. And by the way you can add the merge shape functions to your quick access toolbar for quick access. And if you don't see the merge shapes in your quick access toolbar, you can just click on this uh, little arrow, go to more commands and make sure that you have merge shapes in your quick access toolbar. So from this point I'll be using merge shape functions from the quick access toolbar because it's much quicker this way. And now let me make a few more adjustments and a few more copies until we get the final shape that we're looking for. Alright, all of the shapes are ready and now let's make sure that we select them all and now let's go to merge shapes and choose union so that all of these shapes become one single shape that we can use for our picture. That's awesome. 
And next let's insert a picture into our slide, so let's just pick any picture that we want, let's just drag it and drop it into the slide, ok? And let's make sure that this photo covers the whole shape that we have just created. And now let's send this photo to back, that's beautiful. Let's make sure that the photo is selected, hold down the shift key, select the custom shape and this time let's go to merge shapes and choose intersect. Voila ladies and gentlemen, you have successfully inserted a picture into this custom shape that we have created in part 1. And by the way, you can click on the crop button and you can adjust how your photo looks inside the shape. And now the process of inserting a video into a custom shape is pretty much the same. Just make sure that your video covers your whole shape. Then send your video to back, make sure that the video is still selected, hold down the shift key, select your custom shape and then go to merge shapes and choose intersect. And this way you would place your video into your custom shape. And if you would like your video to stand out a little bit better on a dark background, in that case you can use a line. So in this case I'm using a gradient line for my video. And by the way, if you are creating a PowerPoint template, in that case I would recommend creating a custom picture placeholder. What's awesome about picture placeholders is that they have this little image button in the middle. You can click on that little button and you can quickly insert any picture that you want. If you don't like the image, you can delete it, you can click on the button again and you can insert a new image. So it's a really easy and quick way to insert pictures into custom shapes. So make sure if you are creating slides for other people to use, you go with this approach. And now let's just select all of these shapes and let's copy them and let me show you how we can create a custom image placeholder, ok? And now let's jump into the slide master, this is the place where we can create custom image placeholders like this one. But let's delete this guy and let's create a new one from these beautiful shapes. Let's just make sure that we unite all of these shapes into one single shape, that's beautiful. And now let's go to insert placeholder and let's choose a picture placeholder. And now let's just drag and cover all of these shapes with this uh, picture placeholder. Let's make sure that this picture placeholder is in the back. Now select it, hold down the shift key, select the uh, custom shape and choose intersect. And this way you have created a custom picture placeholder. And now let's get back to the normal view, let's click on layout and let's choose our newly created custom image placeholder layout. And now just click on that little image button and choose any photo that you like. Congratulations my friends, now you know how you can place your photos or videos into any shape that you want. Alright my friends, let's keep on going. And in place number 3, we have slide grids. Just take a look at this slide, notice how all of the slide elements are positioned. And now let's take a look at this slide. Both of these slides are identical in terms of content, but as you can see they look and feel different. And the reason for that is alignment. All of these slide elements on the first slide are pretty much all over the place and it becomes really obvious when I turn on the grid. As you can see this logo and these numbers are out of alignment, this slide title, paragraph and this button are just floating freely and this photo is touching the bottom of the slide. So as you can see the alignment is missing. And now if I turn on the slide grid on the second slide as you can see everything is nicely aligned based on the slide grid. And now as you can see the photo has equal space from the top and bottom of the slide. And here are a few more examples of how slide grids can be used in slide design. And on this slide we have a slide grid of 18 by 12 and you can pretty much create any kind of slide grid that you wish. For example on this slide we have a slide grid of 12 by 8. 12 columns, 8 rows. Ok my friends and now let me show you how you can create a slide grid for yourself. We'll be creating a grid of 12 columns and 8 rows. So first let's start creating our columns and for that we can just go to insert shapes and let's insert a rectangle that touches the top and bottom of our slide. And for now don't worry about the exact width of your columns, just make sure that all of them are sitting flush to each other. And now once all of the 12 columns are ready, we can select them all and group them into one single group. And now let's just grab this handle and let's just stretch all of these columns until they nicely cover the whole slide. Alright that's super awesome, and now let's repeat the same procedure to create 8 beautiful rows.
Ok, so the columns and rows are ready and we can jump into the selection pane and let's see what's going on. We have a group of columns and group of rows and now let's just select both of these groups by hitting Ctrl A and let's group them into one big single group, just like that. And you can use that little eye to quickly hide or show your grid whenever you need it. And by the way, feel free to remove the fill from your grid and add some transparency to your grid lines so that you can see your slide content easily. And once your slide grid is ready, you can use it to help you align all of your slide content inside your slides. Ok my friends, the next we have tip number 4, which is all about the duotone effect. So on this slide we have a nice background photo and this is how this photo looks originally. And now let's take a look at a couple of duotone examples of this photo. So to create a duotone effect you have to pick two colors and you have to use them to recolor your photo. And currently PowerPoint doesn't have this feature, maybe it will in the future, but for now we can use this free website duotone.chipfactory.co to create a duotone effect. Just pick any two colors that you wish and your duotone effect will be created. And the only thing that I would recommend is picking one brighter color and one darker color of any hue that you wish, because otherwise there might be too little contrast in your photo. And if you would like to create the same duotone effect that you can see on this slide, in that case you would have to use the same colors. So let me just copy the hex values of these colors and let's paste them into the website. That's beautiful, we have created the same duotone effect. And by the way, you can type in anything in the search bar, for example Mars, and you can pick any photo that you like. And once you have found a photo that you like, just click on it and click on download and you'll get your beautiful duotone picture that you can insert in your PowerPoint presentations. And by the way, let's say that your colleagues at work or your friends at school are super impressed with that duotone effect and they ask you how they could make it as well. And here comes a bonus tip. Let me show you how you can quickly and easily create a step-by-step -step guide that you can share with your friends and all of that for free. So first of all, let's make sure that we install this free Chrome extension called Scribe. And after the installation, Scribe workspace will open up. We can close it for now and let's jump to the Duotone website. Let's make sure that the Scribe extension is pinned so that we can see it. And now we are ready to go. Let's just click on the Scribe extension and let's click Start Recording. And let's perform all of the actions that we want to be recorded. So first let me reload this Duotone website so that the address is recorded. And now let's enter the color code for the first color. And after that let's do the same for the second color. And now let's just pick any photo that we wish and let's click on Download. And now that we're done with all of the steps, we can stop recording by clicking on this button Complete Recording. And that's all. Now the Scribe page will open up where we will be able to see all of the steps that we have just recorded. And as you can see, first of all, we have to navigate to this Duotone website. Here is the address, that's awesome. And then we have to click on the first color and pick any color that we wish or insert a specific hex code as I did in this uh, step. And next we have to click on the second color and insert one more hex code for the second color. And after that we just scroll down and pick any photo that we want. And by the way, feel free to customize any of the steps. For example, let's just type and pick any photo that you like. And the last step in our guide is clicking on the download button. So everything was recorded successfully. Let's just remove step number 7 because I think it's pretty much the same as step number 6, alright? And now once we're happy, we can share this guide with anyone we want. And this is how my scribe looks like once it's published. Super awesome and it took me only 48 seconds to create it. If you would like to save some time as well and turn any process into a step by step guide, then get scribe for free. Link is in the video description. Super thanks to scribe for saving our time and for sponsoring today's video. And now let's keep on going. And in place number 5 we have text spacing and line spacing. Spacing might seem simple at first sight, but it's really powerful and it can change the look of your slides instantly. And you probably know that you can go to this little drop down menu and choose different spacing presets. 
And let's say this preset very loose is not enough and you would like to have even more spacing. In that case go to more spacing and choose expanded. And now let's insert for example 15 points and hit ok. And now as you can see you have some super wide gaps between your letters. That's super awesome and you can definitely make some creative slide designs with this feature. And now let's take a look at this paragraph text. And for me personally the normal spacing is too narrow and the loose spacing is too wide. So what can I do? I just go to more spacing settings, choose expanded and insert just one point. And this way my letters have just a little bit more space to breathe. That's super awesome. And now in a similar way we can adjust the line spacing. Just look what happens when I hit enter. The word spacing jumps to the next line and it overlaps with our paragraph text. So that's not good. And let me show you how we can fix that. Let's just go to paragraph settings and here we have a couple of line spacing options. For example one and a half line spacing but this is too much. So let's undo that and let's check for other options. And this time let's try multiple and let's insert 0.8. And hit OK. And now as you can see our slide title is looking much better because the spacing between the lines is much smaller. Well then my friends now you know how you can precisely adjust your text and line spacing to achieve the look that you want. Alright and next we have tip number 6 which is all about converting your text into a vector shape and creating something fun. Ok so here we have a nice simple editable text box as you can see we can delete the text and type in anything that we want. By the way this beautiful font is called Orbit if you like to check it out link is in the video description. And now let me show you how you can cut your text in any way that you want. And to cut your text all you need is a shape. And let me quickly create a random shape using the freeform tool. And now select the text box, hold down the shift key, select your shape. And now feel free to choose any of the merge shape functions that you would like. And once you will apply any of the merge shape functions your text will be converted to vector. And I have chosen subtract. And let's say you don't want to make any cuts, you just want to convert your whole text box into a vector shape. In that case the quickest way to do that is just to duplicate your text box, make sure that both of those text boxes are perfectly aligned and then go to merge shapes and choose union. And now your whole text is converted to vector. And now with all of this knowledge, let's create this vector text design. And I'm just creating a random shape that I will use to cut my text. And once the shape is ready, I will duplicate my slide. And on one slide I will keep the top part of the text. And on the other slide I will keep the bottom part of the text. And to create that bottom part, I will first select my shape, then hold down the shift key, select the text and choose intersect. And now let me place both of these parts into the same slide and we can move them around a little bit so that we have a gap. Congratulations my friends, now you know how you can convert your text to vector shape and use merge shape functions creatively. Alright and next in place number 7 we have color shadows. So by default all of the shadows in PowerPoint are black, but hey, no one is stopping you from changing the color of your shadows and this way changing your slide design instantly. And as you can see soft colorful shadows can be used to highlight some of the elements on your slides. And now let me show you how we can pop out these charts by adding some soft colorful shadows behind them. So there is a rounded rectangle shape behind the chart. So let's make sure that we select that rounded rectangle and now let's go into the shadow options. And now feel free to choose any outer shadow preset that you like. And now as you can see the shadow is looking dark and we can change that by changing the shadow color. And now let's add some blur, for example 75 points so that our shadow will look soft, that's good. You can as well add some distance so that your shadow looks a little bit more distant from your shape. And feel free to adjust the shadow transparency as well if you think that your shadow is a little bit too intense. And that's super awesome my friends, now you know how you can use colorful shadows to spice up your slide design. Let's keep on going and tip number 8 is making sure that you're using all of the benefits of the slide master. One great thing about the slide master is that it helps you make global changes. For example you can insert your logo in the slide master and then it will be visible on all of the slides. You can change the look of your slide number in the slide master as well. And to access the slide master all we have to do is just go to view and click on slide master. And here we can make global changes so let's just delete this logo and let's insert a new one. Okay? 
Let's make sure that the new logo is aligned to the center of the slide, that's beautiful. And now, once we close the slide master, we should see the new logo in all of the slides, that's super awesome. By the way, another way to access the slide master is just holding down the shift key and clicking on this little icon. And once we are in the slide master, we can adjust how our slide number looks like. So currently I have inserted this rounded square around the slide number. And if we wish, we can turn this rounded square into a circle. Let's just go to shape format, change shape and let's choose a circle. That's looking beautiful. And by the way, if we would like to, we could change the position of the slide number. So now on the right side, we have this text box, we can delete it. Now let me grab that uh, circle and that slide number and let's drag these guys to the right side of the slide, ok? And now once we close the slide master, we should see our slide number on the right side of the slide. Well done my friends and now you know how you can use the power of the slide master to make global changes. Ok my friends, and in place number 9 we have one more thing that can instantly spice up your slide design, that is gradient text. One awesome technique is to add a gradient fill to your slide title and keep one word white with some white glow. And you could as well play with the transparency, you could create a text gradient where you have one solid color and one color which is absolutely transparent. And this way create some awesome looking text. Alright and now let me show you how we can apply a gradient fill to this slide title. And the process is really easy, let's make sure that we select all of the text, let's go to text fill options and let's choose a gradient fill. And now let's insert as many color stops as we want, let's move them around until we get the look that we want. That's looking beautiful, and let's make it a little bit more interesting by filling this word effect with white color, and let's add a white shadow to add that little glow effect. Congratulations my friends, now you know how you can add that extra pop to your slides with some gradient text. Alright and tip number 10 is all about creating modern looking charts with a gradient fill. Ok so first of all let's insert a chart and the chart type that we're looking for is an area chart. And now let's resize our beautiful chart and let's clean it up by removing all of the elements that we don't need such as the chart title axis labels and those chart lines. And now let's edit the data of our chart. And currently we have two columns of data and we just need one, so let's delete one of those columns. And now in column A let me type numbers from 1 to 100. And now in the series column, let me insert some random numbers, and we can generate some random numbers with this formula ran between. So just type in equals, ran between, open parenthesis, type your lowest number, for example 1, then semicolon, your highest number, for example 100, and close parenthesis. And once you hit enter, a bunch of random numbers will be generated for you that you can see in your chart. That's super awesome, and if you wish you can select your formula again, hit enter and you'll get new random numbers. And now let's add a beautiful gradient fill to our chart. Let's make sure that we keep one color fully opaque and one color fully transparent. And let's add a beautiful gradient line to our chart as well, once again let's keep one color opaque and one color fully transparent. Congratulations my friends, now you know how you can create some modern looking gradient charts. Ok my friends and with tip number 11 we jump back into the slide master once again and explore more awesome slide master features. And as you probably know, we can add animations to any object on the slide once we are in the normal slide view. But did you know that we can add animations once we are in the slide master view as well? Yes, we can do that. And this way we're basically getting two separate animation timelines that we can use to get creative. And what's awesome about the slide master animations is that those animations will be repeated on all of the slides. As you can see that little playback animation at the bottom of the slide is actually a slide master animation and it is visible on all of the slides. 
And now, while we are in the normal view and if we would go into the animation pane, you would see that there are no animations in the animation pane. And the reason for that is that all of these animations are existing in the Slide Master view. And to access the Slide Master, we can go to View and clicking on the Slide Master. And now, once we are in the Slide Master view, we can see all of the animations that exist in the Slide Master. So here we have a couple of animations that are responsible for this little playback animation. And here at the bottom I have a growth shrink animation that I have applied to this background photo. And now let me duplicate the current slide layout and let's do a little experiment. So first of all let's rename this duplicate, let's call it for example test. And let me remove all of these playback elements at the bottom of the slide. And now let me insert a random picture of a fox drinking some coffee and let's put it somewhere right here, ok. And now let's just animate this little fox. We can insert a motion path line, direction right, ok. Now let's just drag that red bubble so that the fox goes to the right corner of the slide. And we can as well make sure that the autoverse option is activated in the animation settings and let's make sure that this animation is repeated until the end of slide. And now, once we get back to the normal view, we should see this little fox on every slide that is using this exact slide layout. And now let me select a couple of these slides, let's go to layouts and let's choose this newly created uh, layout called test, where we can see that little fox. That's super awesome. And by the way, let me remove the footer slide number so that they don't get in the way. And now once we play these slides on the full screen, as you can see that little fox is visible, it is animated and it will be animated on all of the slides that are using the same slide layout. So as you can see my friends, the slide master is really powerful and you can use its secondary animation timeline to create repeatable animations for multiple slides. You're making a wonderful progress my friend, and now comes tip number 12 that will help you add more time to your animations. Let's say you would like to create a 2 minute timer, where this white circle grows and fills itself until the time is up. And of course, this animation plays too fast right now, so let's delete it and let's do it from scratch. Let's select this white circle, let's go to animations and let's choose this wheel animation. Alright, and since we want to do a 2 minute timer for the duration, we would have to insert 120 seconds, so let's try doing that. And once you hit enter, as you can see the maximum duration that you get is 59 seconds, and you can't add more seconds to this value. But don't worry my friend, there is a way to add more time to your animations and all we have to do is jump to the animation settings. So let's just double click on the wheel animation to jump to the settings and over here in the timing tab we have this duration field where we can insert as many seconds as we wish, for example 120 seconds. Click OK and now as you can see this duration field changes to auto but don't worry, it's definitely 2 minutes. If we zoom out, we can check the end of the animation and it says the animation ends at 2 minutes. That's super awesome. And now if we would play this animation, this circle with a spin around and fill itself until 2 minutes are up. And to save your time, we will not be waiting the whole 2 minutes for this animation to complete, but now you know how you can add more time to your animations. Ok, next let's continue with tip number 13 and it's all about rotation center. Just look at these examples and try noticing where the center of rotation is. So for example, for this green arrow, the center of rotation is this little white circle. And you can probably guess where the center of rotation is of this little cap. And now the center of rotation of this arm is somewhere around the shoulder, as it should be. And now let me close the slideshow and let me show you how all of these objects are rotating once again. Ok, now let's try creating a center of rotation for these objects. So here we have a circle and a rectangle. So let me group these guys and let's see what happens if I try to rotate them. And as you can see currently this group is rotating around its middle point. And let's say we would like that little circle to be the center of rotation, so how we can do that? Well, first of all, let me turn on the slide guide so that we can see where is the center and middle of the slide. And now all we have to do is just to insert a huge circle that covers our group. Let's make sure that the circle is big enough to cover all of the shapes on the slide. And let's make sure that the circle is aligned to the center of the slide. And now let's just select all of these shapes and let's group them into one big group. And now, we would try to rotate this group, as you can see it rotates around its little circle. 
And this is what we want. This is our new rotation center. And by the way, feel free to remove the fill from this huge circle so that only the small circle and that little rectangle is visible. Well done my friends, now you know how you can create precise rotation centers for your animations. And now with tip number 14, we enter the world of GIF animations. And as you can see this robot is waving, its legs are moving up and down and at the same time its whole body is moving left and right. It would be quite hard to create this animation just using PowerPoint animations. And that's why we will combine PowerPoint animations and GIFs. Let's go! And first of all, let me just find that robot and for that we can use stock illustrations provided by Office 365. And now let's convert this illustration to shape so that we can access all of the individual parts. And since we want to make a waving arm animation, we'll have to create a new center of rotation because currently, as you can see, this arm is rotating around its middle point and we would like the rotation center to be somewhere where the shoulder is. And luckily for you, you already know how you can create a new rotation center and let me show you a new technique. We can just duplicate the arm and let's attach it here at the bottom. And before that, let's just flip it like this. OK. And now let's move this duplicated arm somewhere right here. OK. And now let's set its fill to no fill so that it becomes transparent. And now let's make sure that we group both of these arms. And now we should get a new rotation center which is somewhere around the shoulder. That's super great. And now let's add a spin animation to this arm. And let's use 45 degrees for the spin amount. And let's make sure that auto reverse is activated. And now let's make those legs move up and down. And for that we can use motion path animation. And for the animation duration let's choose up. OK. And for the travel distance let's keep it very short. Because we just need a very subtle up and down animation. And in the animation settings, let's make sure that we check the auto reverse option because we want this leg to go up and go down. Okay. And now for the animation duration, let's keep it short. Let's use 0.1 second. Okay. And now let's use the animation painter and let's paste the same animation to the second leg. But for the second leg, let's add a delay of 0.2 seconds. So now all of the animations that we have in the animation pane should finish at 0.4 seconds, ok? And now if we will play all of these animations, it would look something like this. And as you can see, all of these animations have played just a single time. And if we would try adding repetition until the end of slide, the animations would not look correct. So let's just check it out on the full screen and as you can see now these two legs are going up and down at the same time. And of course this is not what we want, so let's undo that and let's use the power of GIF animations. And before we export this slide as a GIF animation, let's make sure that the slide transition of this slide is set to none. Because otherwise our GIF animation might look not so smooth. And now let's go to File, Export and let's click on Create an Animated GIF. And I'm choosing Extra Large Quality, Transparent Background and 0 seconds spent on each slide. PowerPoint will know how long our GIF should be. And now for the slides, we just want to export a single slide and that is slide 53. So let's select it and let's click on Create GIF. And now we can go to Insert Pictures and we can insert our newly created GIF into the slide. That's super awesome. And as you can see our robot is animated, it's waving and the legs are moving. We can resize our GIF and we can as well crop some of those transparent pixels from the side if we wish by using the crop button. And now let's just add the motion path animation to our GIF direction right. And let's make sure that the auto reverse option is activated in the animation settings. And now our robot should be moving right and left. Congratulations my friends, now you know how you can create complex animations by combining PowerPoint animations and GIF animations. Ok my friends, welcome to tip number 15, where you will learn about a super powerful animation tool called Bookmark Trigger. So a Bookmark Trigger can help you loop a sequence of animations, even if those animations have delays. Let me give you an example, so here I have applied a single growth shrink animation to each of these colorful bubbles. And this animation sequence plays just one time. And let's say I would like these bubbles to be pulsing the whole time until I go to the next slide. So here comes the bookmark trigger. And by the way, let's see what would happen if I would apply a repetition until the end of slide for all of these growth shrink animations. So now as you can see all of these colorful bubbles are pulsing, but they are not doing that in the correct order that we want. 
So let me show you how we can use that bookmark trigger. And first of all, let's make sure that we know when exactly do all of our animations end. And as you can see, the last animation ends at 2.8 seconds. And now let's just go to insert audio and let's click on record audio. And now we'll have to record a short audio clip that is just a little bit longer than the last of our animations. And you can see completely silent or mute your microphone. The most important thing is that this audio clip should be just a little bit longer than the last of your animation. And in my case, since my last animation ends at 2.8 seconds, I have recorded an audio clip of 3 seconds. And now as you can see in the animation pane, a play animation has appeared for this audio file, so let's just move it to the top of the animation pane list. And let's make sure that this audio recording plays automatically. And at the same time, let's make sure that this audio recording is looping until stop. And by the way, if you wish to trim your audio, you can do that by clicking on this button, Trim Audio. And now just insert a new duration for your audio clip. And since my last animation ends at 2.8 seconds, let's make this audio clip 2.9 seconds. And now let's make sure that we click at the start of our audio clip so that we can see 00, 0 seconds, that's good. And now let's click on this magic button, Add Bookmark. And now as you can see a little yellow bubble appeared in our audio file and this is the bookmark trigger. Now let's make sure that we select all of the animations that we want to be repeated. Let's go to animations, let's click on trigger, let's go to on bookmark and let's click on bookmark number one. And now my friends we have created something really spectacular. All of these animations will be triggered each time when this audio clip hits bookmark number one. And as you remember we have set this audio file to keep on looping which means that all of these animations will be looping as well. So let's give it a preview on the full screen and let's see what happens. And as you can see all of the animations are successfully looping in the correct order. Congratulations my friends, now you have one more powerful animation tool at your disposal, the audio bookmark trigger. And now my friends, in tip number 16, let's talk about the Morph Transition. So if you have Morph Transition in your Pop-On version, let me show you how you can make sure it works perfectly every single time. Now as you can see, these mobile phone pictures are nicely morphing from one picture to another, but sometimes pictures just won't morph smoothly like that. And sometimes you might get something that looks like this, where one picture fades away and then the other one comes in. So let me show you how you can quickly fix that. So let's jump into the selection pane and let's give a new name to this picture. By the way, you can click on arrange and select selection pane to open it. Okay, so currently it's named picture one. And instead of that, let's just type in double exclamation marks and now anywhere that you want. For example, phone. Okay, double exclamation marks and phone. And now let's use the same name for the second picture. So let's start with double exclamation marks and type in phone. And now PowerPoint will understand that both of these pictures are connected and the morph transition will look much better. So let's check it out on the full screen. And now as you can see we are nicely and smoothly morphing from one picture to the second picture. So remember you have to use the same name for both of the pictures and make sure that those names are starting with double exclamation marks. And now my friends in tip number 17, let's talk about the morph transition a little bit more. So you probably already know that you can animate objects on your slice just by changing their position and applying morph transition to both of the slides. But have you tried experimenting with the picture crop tool and the morph transition? If no, well, let me show you how it works. So let's say that here we have a nice photo cropped to a circle. Now let's make sure that the slide transition is set to morph. And now let's duplicate this slide. And now on the duplicate slide, let's just move this photo circle to the right side. Okay. And now let's just give it a preview. And now as you can see the morph transition does this animation where this uh, photo circle is just moving right and left. And now let's make it a little bit more interesting, let's select this picture on the second slide, let's click on the crop button and now let's just increase the size of the photo. And once you're happy with how your photo looks, just click on the crop button again to finalize the changes. And now let's check out the morph transition once again on the full screen. And now as you can see we're getting this movement right and left and at the same time we're getting the zoom in effect thanks to the crop tool. And by the way I have used the same principles to animate these slides, morph transition and crop tool. Alright my friends I can almost see the finish line, let's keep on going. Tip number 18, creating auto updating beautiful donut charts. Okay so first of all let's just go to insert charts and let's pick a donut chart. 
Alright, now let's make sure that we have only two rows of data. We can delete rows 4 and 5. And now let's just rename our column and our two rows. So I'm just naming the first row visible part and the second row invisible part. And now for the visible part, let's insert for example 80. And now for the invisible part, let's use a formula. Let's type in equals 100 minus B2, which is our visible part. And we should get 20. And now my friend, you have created a donut chart that is really easy to update. And now let's just insert 50 for the visible part. And as you can see, the invisible part is calculated automatically. That's super awesome. And of course, feel free to style your donut chart any way you wish. Usually, I like to add some colorful soft shadows to my charts to make them pop a little bit better. You're doing wonderful, my friends. And here comes tip number 19 on how to quickly and easily divide a pie chart or a donut chart into equal parts. And that can be really useful when you are designing UI elements or infographics. So first of all, let's insert a donut chart and you already know how to do that. Let's go to insert charts, pie charts and here we have a donut chart. Okay. And now let's say that we would like to divide this donut chart into six equal parts. And for that reason, let's make sure that we have six rows of data in our table. Okay. And now let's type in the same value for each of these rows. So let's just use number 10. And now as you can see, our donut chart is divided into six equal parts. And before we continue, let's just clean up this chart by deleting all of the elements that we don't need, such as the chart title and chart legend. And if you wish, you can adjust the look of your donut chart by adjusting the whole size of your donut chart. And now let's make sure that we cut this donut chart, all right? And now let's go to paste, let's choose paste special and let's choose SVG, okay? And now we have pasted our donut chart as an SVG file and first we have to convert it to shape. So let's just click on this button convert to shape and now let's ungroup it by right clicking and choosing group. And voila my friends, now we can access all of these individual parts and create UI elements or infographics. And by the way, if you'd like to have some gaps between your donut chart parts, in that case you could use a different approach. So this time let's just insert a donut shape. And now let's insert a thin rectangle. Let's make sure that it is higher than our donut chart. And let's put it at the center of the slide, just like that. Now let's duplicate it and let's put it horizontally like this. And now let's make two more copies of these narrow rectangles and let's place them diagonally in the center of the slide. And now let's select all of these narrow rectangles and let's go to merge shapes and choose union. And this way we can merge all of these narrow rectangles into one single shape. And now let's select our blue donut chart, hold down the shift key, select those narrow rectangles, let's go to merge shapes and choose subtract. And this way we have subtracted those narrow rectangles from our donut chart. But as you can see, we still cannot access those individual parts and let's do one more step. Let's insert a square. Let's make sure that we cover the whole donut chart. Okay, and let's send the square to back. And by the way, I think we can change the color of this square so that we can see better what's going on. So let's just turn it to white. All right. Now let's select a square, hold down the shift E, select our donut shape. And now let's go to merge shapes and this time let's choose fragment, okay? And I'll select a white square, delete it and now you'll have all of your individual parts. You can modify. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hooray my friends, you did it! Tip number 20. Thank you so much for watching this video for so long. And now let me share with you my favorite PowerPoint shortcuts that I'm using all the time. And let's start with Ctrl A. That helps you to select all of the elements on your slides. So for example, I can hit Ctrl A to select everything. And then I can just hold down the shift key to deselect something that I don't want, for example this title. And now I can move the rest of these shapes anywhere I wish. And next we have Ctrl G that I'm using all of the time to group elements into groups. And once your shapes are in the same group, it's much easier to move them around, to apply animations and to apply formatting. I'm sure you know how to use Ctrl C and Ctrl V, but what I usually do, I just select a shape that I want, hold down the Ctrl key and drag a copy. And if you're holding Ctrl and Shift keys at the same time, you can drag a copy in a straight line. And next you can hold down Ctrl and Shift keys to resize any shape from center. If you will just hold down the Shift key, you will keep the proportions, but your shape will be increasing more to the right side. And if you hold down Ctrl and Shift keys, you will be resizing from the center. And now whenever I want to quickly copy and paste a style from one shape to another, I'm just using Ctrl Shift C and Ctrl Shift V. That's a great time saver. 
And now whenever I want to quickly increase the font size of my text boxes, I'm just holding down the Ctrl Shift keys and hitting on the dot. Well done my friends, now you know all of the top 20 PowerPoint tips and tricks that will take your presentations to the next level. Tutorial slides are free to download, link is in the video description. Thank you for watching, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.